Imagine an island in the middle of the ocean that is 200 meters wide and two meters above sea level at its highest point. There's no stopping what's about to come and we need to make sure that we protect ourselves first. Not only will the livelihood and health of the RMI people be at risk, but also the very existence of the RMI as well. first concern is making sure that we don't convey a message that forces our community to lose agency or lose hope, um, rather that you know we convey a message that there's ways in which we can protect ourselves and there's ways in which we can uh, plan for a, a better future. We are still developing our National Adaptation Plan, or NAP for short. Uh, the objective of the NAP is to develop a framework for adaptation actions within the next 10 years. The NAP will identify the main issues for the RMI and prioritize actions for short-term adaptation and options and pathways for longer-term adaptation. This could include things like raising land, reclaiming land, or even consolidating population within an island so that communities are living in safer places even on the same island where they already are. In a country like RMI where the topography is very flat, it's difficult to visualize precisely um, the areas projected to be inundated under different sea level rise scenarios. Um, so visualization tools are very useful for us to use. The visualization platform developed under this work really is quite unique. In the first place, it collected and connected layers of data that were never available before. Having these layers of data and these scenarios, not just of potential hazards and impacts, but also of potential solutions, provides an avenue for the government to undertake consultation, planning, and to develop pathways that the community and society can understand and get behind. Marshall Islands is very much uh, culturally rooted in our land. Um, we have a very traditional land tenure system that's complicated and ancient, and what happens to that land tenure system uh, once we pick up and move, or once we have to move citizens, or what, if we have to do really extreme measures like building islands. So. When we talk about long-term climate adaptation options for a country like the Marshall Islands, it isn't enough to think about engineering. It isn't enough to think about building seawalls. We need to understand what fits with the local culture. We need to think about the priorities of the communities. We'll be going out to the communities and actually working with those specific groups to ensure that we get all of the different perspectives and that we make this as uh, as seamless of a transition, if needed, as possible. So this visualization platform has been really helpful in that regard, in planning for the short, medium, and long term, so that the big investments that need to be made are prioritized, but also the smaller investments that can be immediately taken also come to the forefront and are available as solutions. In some cases, big ticket items like land reclamation may not be necessary. Maybe it's just about moving a school a couple of meters inland and then you already gain a lot of safety and resilience from a simple investment like that. I know that in the past, our country has focused really heavily on mitigation and um, we focused on trying to get countries around the world to lower emissions. But adaptation allows us to uh, take a more personal, uh, introspective look at our country and our nation and make sure that we are ready first for whatever is to come.